where this is Rhett Elaine. See, I typed it right there. Okay, this is part three of a video on basketball goals with the projectile launcher. Uh, the first one, I shot the ball horizontal with the ball launcher and measured how far it went off a table to calculate the velocity, and I got this value of 3.26 meters per second. The second video, I set up, I launched it at an angle to try to get a basketball goal that was 0.4 meters higher, and I calculated where to have to put that goal, and I shot it, and I got it, and everything was winning. Okay, so this is stuff I have right here. Uh, all this stuff is my calculations for that problem. Now, that, I just want to show it to you. So here's G, there's the height, there's my initial velocity, there's my angle theta. Python assumes things are in radians, so I multiplied by pi, divided by 180 to get it in radians. After I solved the equations, I got the A, B, and C term for the quadratic equation. And this is a little trick. The quadratic equation is kind of bulky, so I kind of broke it into these constants, right? So now I can just type, literally type the quadratic equation. So I get two times negative B plus the square root of B squared. Remember in Python, squared is star star. B squared minus 4AC over 2A. So I just typed in the quadratic equation. A, B, and C are numbers. I, didn't, I don't know what they are, but it doesn't matter. And then I did it again with a minus there instead of a plus. And then I print the two times. And then after, just because I want to know. And then to solve for x, I just put in v0 cosine theta times t and print that. So if I run that, I get that, the two times and the, the distance, that's it. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, let's do something else. Let's model the motion of the basketball, of the goal. Okay, so let's just do this. And we can, it's a different way to solve the problem. So I'm going to already have g. Um, I need to do a couple things. Uh, first, let's make a graph. T graph equals graph. Uh, X title equals, we're going to plot trajectory. So the X title is going to be a uh, horizontal position in meters. And the Y title is going to be vertical position. This is the trajectory plot. Okay, and that I need to actually plot a graph. So F1 equals G curve. That's gonna be the actual graph on there. And it'll be, I'm gonna make it blue. I always make it blue. I don't know why, I just do. I don't like, if it's black, it looks boring. But you could change that if you want. Okay, now I need to start with my initial conditions. So where is the ball? It starts at Y equals zero, X equals zero. Uh, I need the initial X velocity and the initial Y velocity. So Vx equals V0 times cosine theta. Vy, and this is the starting velocity. Remember, in a numerical calculation, I'm going to change that value. So I don't have to put initial. It is the initial because it's the first one. So V0 times sine of theta. Okay, what else do I need? T. T is 0. I need the time step. Dt equals 0.01. Okay, now let's do this a simple way. I know the time is up to 0.39 seconds, so I'm going to run it for half a second. So I can say while t less than 0 0.5, do the following. Now I have a numer remember your numerical calculation stuff. The first step is to calculate the forces. Well, I have constant forces, so that's pretty easy. The next step is to update the velocity and then update the position. So let's update the, there's no change in velocity for the x direction. I don't need to do anything. I only need to update the velocity for the y. So I'm going to use the velocity update formula. So it says the, except, oh, I'm sorry, that should be negative, because I called g positive. Yeah, I'm dealing with scalar g. Uh, so the, take the, the a velocity, Subtract g delta t, and that gives me the new velocity, just from the definition of acceleration. Now, I need to update the position. So I can say y equals y it's vy times ct. Oops, case matters. And the x position. 
and update time. And if you need a refresher on this, I'll post a link to this code, but also you can, uh, I'll post a link to uh, a tutorial. Now, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to plot the graph. So I'm gonna say f1.plot. What's the x coordinate? Well, it's x. What's the y coordinate? Y. That's it. Let's run it and see what happens. I don't actually know what's gonna happen. Should work. Yeah, so there it gets launched. And the question is, where does it get back to 0.4 meters? There's the first location. There's the second location at 5.25. How to get 5.49? I got a slightly different answer. Oh, I know why. Okay, so my time step, because of my time step, but it's close enough. I think I would get the right answer here. If I put it at uh, right there, gotta be right on there. You can zoom, you can play around with these numbers, and that's one way to find the solution to the problem. Um, what if I what if I launch it at a 80 degree angle? What would happen? Let's just do it. Look, here's the cool thing. I just change over here 80 and rerun it. I don't have to redo the problem. I've already done the problem once. Now it's gonna get be further away or closer actually. It's at 0.265. So there you go. Numerical calculations. It looks like magic, and kind of it is. It's definitely awesome.